Welcome everyone to today's podcast episode. You're listening to the Home Design Podcast. My name is Adam Case, your host, and we aim to educate, inspire, and connect South Florida professionals to position them as the industry authority. Today, we have a very special guest. We're going to be talking about layered living, approachable luxury living, next generation designers, and we're here with the one and only Anu Anu of Anu Anu Interior Design. I am so happy to be here, Adam. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much, and I'm going to give you one of these. Yes. <laughs> all right. The audience is really big today. They love it. It's Gosh. incredible. Look at all the people out there. It's a sold there. out show. They're here for you. Uh, I feel very honored. So it's, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. great. And we're here to talk about you. Okay, let's do it. You know, authentic. Everything here is meant to be authentic, real. There is no such thing as a mistake or a misstep. But, you know, Anu Anu, Perfect. let's talk about you. Introduce yourself and from your start where, where you started and where you are today. Perfect. So um, my name is Anna Weno. I run and own Anna Weno Interior Design. And I um, I have a little bit of a non-traditional start to my business, as you know. Um, yep. But for everybody listening, um, I'm a self-taught interior designer based solely on passion and just a desire in my heart to do what I felt like God's calling was for my life as a little girl. But um, at the ripe age of 38, um, I realized, you know what, like life is short. I'm going to take the leap from corporate America and do what I think I'm designed to do, no pun intended. <laughs> um, but as a little girl, I love design. I, I was around my mom who was always designing her house and uh, my grandmother who worked at a wallpaper store and we were always rearranging furniture and it was like my heart. But I didn't know you could go into that field. Right. Like it was never laid out. It was very, you know, I'm 41 just to give you perspective, but it was never, it was like, you were an accountant, you were a lawyer, you were in finance, you were in marketing. Like there were pretty straightforward paths in college, at least from the, you know, counselors that counseled me. They never said like anything about being creative. Right. So I did, um, what made the most sense, which is I'm going to be an accountant like my mom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I started there in college and quickly pivoted when I got my first C. Um, Cause I'm like a, a overachiever, right. straight A type of gal. And it was my freshman year. Like, no, this it's not must, gonna work. it's not going to work. If I'm getting C's in this, like there's something wrong. There's right. not, this is not a good match. Um, so I pivoted and did uh, marketing and okay. economics. Right. So advertising the creative side of marketing. And then that led me to 16 years in corporate America working for luxury hotels. Amazing. And I um, led digital marketing, essentially, like started selling keywords on Google. I mean, talking 16 years ago, going into keywords, digital marketing, I mean, it is night and day even for what it is today. So you what you've learned through that. Yeah. 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 Well, it's almost like, is it relevant now? Right. I mean, it's been you right. know so much has changed. But of course, it is. It is relevant. Um but yeah, so I, I did that for, for 16 years. And then about, um, I would say, seven years into that, okay. I started designing. I'm like, I'm going to design my house. And I'm going to design for friends for free and my family for free. And so I pursued that hard nights, weekends, just living out my passion. And I was vocal about it. Right. I worked in an environment where um, at Starwood, it was so, that's the hotel company I work for now, Marriott. Right. Um, they were so innovative and they encouraged you to pursue your passions, be it inside the nine to five, like hours or outside. So I talked to everybody about my desire for design. And one day um, my boss came to me and said, hey, listen, uh, we are getting kicked out. We were working out of a hotel. Right. And she said, we're getting kicked out of the hotel and we um, need to go find office space and lead the whole project. So we just do digital marketing, right? Like we're not in real estate. <laughs> right. And she goes, and I'm looking at her like, why is she telling me? Like is some, somebody else in corporate is going to come and handle this, right? And she right. goes, I'll let you design the whole thing if you lead the whole thing. <laughs> and, and I'm like, so. Pawned like, it off on you. She pawned it off right. on me. But I'm like, and keep my job, like, and do this other thing. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> welcome to corporate America. <laughs> there you go. But it was the best thing that I could have ever said yes to. It was probably about an 18 month project. Wow. I worked with the real estate team, the finance team. I, you know, I had to manage the budget for it. I hired a construction team, like stuff. I, I had no idea what I was doing, right. but I had the support of, you know, being inside those walls and got to design the whole thing. 
and we had a whole reveal party and there was champagne and everybody <laughs> came and it was like the whole, you know, I'm pretending in my head, this is HGTV right, and right. I'm just going to like invite everybody in. And, um, so from that moment, a few weeks after a woman stepped in the office to meet with my boss and once we were in the space right. and she's like, who designed the space? And my, and my boss at the time was like, oh, oh, Anne did. And she's like, what do you mean, Anne? Like, Anne works for you. Right. And my boss is like, well, she does interior design on the side. Right. That woman hired me to design her whole house. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so that, was that the first, like, official it was. paid job? Exactly. Or? <laughs> that was it. And That's that amazing. was, like, and the lesson that I talk about in that is don't be shy right. about your dreams. Don't be shy about communicating what you love and what you think you're designed to do. Don't don't think that because you don't have the education or you're worried somebody's gonna, you know, my boss, I don't want my boss to know that right. I love something else. Right. Like it's human to love other things besides what you're doing day to day. Absolutely. Um, and because I did that and because I shared about it, she came to me and asked me to lead that. She wouldn't have otherwise. Right. She would have no Maybe I wouldn't be sitting know. in this beautiful marble um, table with let's, you, Adam. Let's talk about this. I, I mean, know. this is I, Cambria, Cambria quartz. I mean, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's so beautiful. Like, <laughs> so I love it so much. Do you use much. Cambria in your projects? I do. Okay. I do. So, yes, yeah. exactly. In fact, I'm renovating um, a space for myself right now okay. for my studio. Amazing. So maybe I'll replicate this beautiful stone. You gotta go with the uh, waterfall <laughs> the edge. Waterfall. I yeah. mean, obviously. I mean, it, it Come adds on. everything. Come on. So is, when, you, when talking about, not to get away from that, but when you're talking about design and different elements that you put into your projects, yeah. um, Talking about waterfalls, but really anything. Are there certain things that stand out that you find as a consistent trend to go to that you like to make sure that you implement that gives that ultimate wow factor? Yeah, great question. Um, so the answer would be that it for me as a designer, there's usually one element in a space that then fuels the whole design. Right. Often for me, it's de depending on the space, but kitchens and baths, it's the tile. Okay. Always the tile. I think that tile needs to be the hero of a space in, in kitchen and baths. Okay. Um, so that would be the wow in, in a lot of my designs, not all of them and not all clients like care enough or they're just very simple and they want something very basic. They want it to last a long time. I try to push them a little bit right. um, outside of their comfort zone, but tile for sure. And then in other spaces, I would say for me, it's wallpaper. Okay. Like, that's usually the driver if a client says, listen, I, you know, for my living room or, well, usually a bedroom or a secondary space. It's like, yeah, I, I, yes to the wallpaper. I start the design by finding the wallpaper. Okay. And then everything else is revolved around that wallpaper. Absolutely. But this is just the subjectivity of being a designer, right? And, and, and that's got to be a consistent trend because and there's probably a lot of people out there that try to get the perfect piece for every element. And then mm -hmm. when they look at it, like, this doesn't go together. Yeah. So it's like you have to kind of have the... the casting role exactly or there's lead role. there's always yeah. a casting role yeah. and if there's not it's like i'm i'm paralyzed right. as it is i'm like i, I gotta stop working on this until i get you know the lead character right exactly. in the space and then everything flows it's just a moment that i have um it sometimes it's a pillow right like, it can be something very small um but yeah, that's how my brain works. And then everything else takes shape. Well, textiles, I mean, there's so much that goes into oh it. I gosh. mean, between the color, the pattern, yeah. you know, the, the texture of it itself. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so much, so many elements and even wallpaper. And I know that you came out with your own wallpaper line yeah. as well. So, I mean, I know that's a passion of yours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, and again, it started with my grandmother. Right. Like I remember sitting in this, like, it was like a paint store, a million wallpaper books, right. which still exist, by the way. I know some people listening are like, what are wallpaper books? Like, right. I just go online, right? <laughs> like, no, there, there's actual books that you like page for days. So I got in my mom wallpaper her house. She would wallpaper and then wallpaper on top of it and wallpaper on top of it because she hated removing the wallpaper, <laughs> right. which is like the bane of a designer's existence. Right. Um, but yeah, I love wallpaper. I have my own line um, that is very fun. I've installed it for clients and yeah, it's great. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. And one of those trends that, you know, just watching everything that you're doing, there's things that stand out for everybody. Mm -hmm. And something that really stands out with you is the approachability of design mm -hmm. and something mm -hmm. that you preach in a lot of different ways. You have it on your website, you speak about it. Yeah. Um, what does that mean to you? Yeah. Great question. Um, so approachable luxury is um, sort of a phrase that when I was building my brand and when I started working with different clients, it came to me because in Miami, so I, I'm from Chicago, grew up in a farm town and then moved to New York City, back to Chicago, now in Miami. And when to be a designer in Miami, what you have in your head when I moved here seven years ago was like, 
white and modern <laughs> and sterile high gloss. and high gloss <laughs> right. and like very fancy and like don't sit on that sofa because it's twenty five thousand dollars, <laughs> which exists still. Yeah. But I remember coming in like I can either like go that direction and give sort of the market what they want, or I could be me. Right. And I chose to be me, um, and it's paid off thankfully. Um, but where that brings approachable luxury, I thought, you know what? I am a like homegrown, grounded Midwest chick right. that came. I, you know, my, my parents didn't give me money. My I had to pay my way through college. Like anything that I had, I had to work for. Right. Right. So there's like this work ethic and this um, appreciation of life. I feel like that I was given, um, even though I fought my parents on it <laughs> like all the time. I'm right. so thankful for it today. And then as I got older and started making money and living in New York and just being exposed to luxury hotels, I was in that business again for, for so many years, I realized like my life is a balance. Right. Like this is who I am, like heart and soul. I, I, I want people to feel always welcome, you know, whether that's literally in my house with my designs in every aspect of my life. Um, but um, I think there's a place for being refined. There's right. a place for being elevated. I like some bougie things, like I will own that, but I want I want my designs to feel that you can come in, you can sit down, there's a warmth in the space, right. and there's elements around it that go, this is refined. This is not all like all uh, Target, or right. you know, not that I really source from Target that much, but like, and I love Target stuff, yeah, by the way, absolutely. don't get me wrong. Um, great, there's a great line that just came out actually, but, but I really wanted, my brand, my personality, everything to come through right. with who I am and then the product that I'm designing. So, And that's so important because, as you said, there's a lot of places and homes and apartments and condos yeah. that you walk into. And it's like you're afraid to step on their yeah. floor or step, sit on their sofa where it has to be livable. Yeah, it has to be livable. And I, I, it's just not who I am. I am a type of person. I'm like, I want people around my dinner table. Right. I don't <laughs> care if you take off your shoes. Don't take off your shoes. It doesn't matter. Right. Like, There's just things that I, I want people. The experience inside the home matters more than the $20,000 sofa, right. you know? And again, there's, that means I'm not going to get those clients, right? I'm not going to get that level of client probably because it's not who I am. And that's okay. There's well, another designer for that. And there's another client for me that does appreciate and is aligned with my brand. It, without a doubt. But you know, in contrary to that, I mean, I've gone in a lot of homes and a lot of projects. And the thing is, it's not necessarily that every high end project is that super expensive sofa like even i you know i've gone into with all this media production and content production that we're doing we're going into 20 yeah. million dollar homes 10 million dollar homes and they it looks livable yeah in every way Amazing. and it's comfortable they have families like you know i, I mean you hit you have a daughter i have yeah. kids i've you know it's it's crazy where you know, it doesn't matter what type of living situation you're in yeah. you want people to feel like they can live yeah. in it and not be mad that your kids are on the sofa or your dog is on the sofa. Oh, I mean, it, Lord have mercy yeah. on my new puppy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's right. And especially coming, well, not coming out of COVID. We're right. obviously still in it, but that's been a massive revelation, right? Right. This, we don't need to, I mean, we've talked about it a lot as designers and, but people are living in their home in right. totally new ways. They're occupying their space a lot more. The percentage of which their home in their spaces is vastly greater than it was a few years ago. So right. your house has to be livable. But again, I want it to be livable and luxury. 100%. I want it to feel like, okay, I, I feel special here, but I could like kick back and relax at the same time. Without a doubt. And the yeah. thing is, and that fits like most people's personality and their lifestyle. Yeah. And, and honestly, what the mass market is, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's that affordable luxury, approachable yeah. luxury, something that's livable. Yeah. Um, but you know, that that's what people are looking for. But when you're when you're going into these home projects and, you know, people talk about trends, but as we know, trends are made to go out of style. Yeah. So that way they can, you know, it's, it's a yeah. marketing yeah. <laughs> gimmick, exactly. but um, and what are people asking for? Mm. What are they asking for? You know, to me, what I hear a lot is this idea that everything has to be family friendly. So right. it's less about like a, a visual trend or like a, a new stone that's coming out or, you know, um, I mean, I, I can talk to some of that as well, actually, but it is more like this space needs to serve my family right. in every way possible. And I'm like, okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> um, so that's for sure a trend that's been happening, but I think now it's a priority more than a trend right. probably. Um, I would say another thing is is the, the talk of like kitchens not being white. 
Right. That's something I've, I've been reading about, but also clients like, I don't want an all white kitchen. Right. I want it to have some color. Like I'm amidst two kitchen designs right now and one is blue and one is green. That's amazing. Like, like, like royal, you know, like jewel tone blue and jewel tone green. Yeah. And I'm so fired up. About it. Like, <laughs> That's amazing. So, so fired up about it. And finding those clients that will take yeah. those steps. Because a lot of times, white is, you know, it's easy to stay safe. It is easy to, <laughs> and it's never going to not be, it's, right. it's always going to be there. Absolutely. It's just going to, you know, ebb and flow a little bit, um, depending on the season. I'm also seeing a lot of black kitchens. Um, Amazing. And I, sign I love that, that look. Yeah, like it's so good. But even if, if say, if somebody is looking to play it safe, but yet they want to kind of step a little bit further. Yeah. What are the elements that you add to these kitchens? Yeah, I call it the jewelry of the yeah. kitchen, right? So it's your backsplash, it's your lighting, it's your hardware. Those three elements that can easily be swapped if in th three or two years even, you're like, I don't like the backsplash anymore. Right. You know, it, it's, it's, it's easy. You know, you just hire somebody and you get new backsplash. Right. It's, it's not a, a cumbersome project and it's not financially, it's not going to break the bank either. So those three elements, lighting, hardware, and backsplash like easily change out and make or break space right yeah and th and then you know that kind of goes into just accessories and decor yeah. and things like that you know there's a lot of people you know listening to what you're saying mm -hmm. and you know they might be not be Do ready people for listen to what i'm saying they well <laughs> we all like to believe that people like to hear what we have to say but probably not but they'll take little Perfect. snippets there's little, at least one person listening <laughs> there thank has you to everybody be. who's tuning in we appreciate you so much and, and if one person can get a piece of advice or a yeah. piece of knowledge then you've made an impact on somebody else Amen. and that's really what it comes down to because you know even talking about small budgets you know because yeah. everything isn't just about having a huge budget mm -hmm. and making a complete renovation remodel gut tear it down, you yeah. know, um, there are elements. What are those elements that people can do in living spaces, bedrooms, bathrooms, whatever it might be yeah. that people might not be thinking about? You know, I mean, again, it depends on the space, but th there are so many things that you can change. I, I would say one thing that sort of like get me out of a job, but I think the one thing that's very underrated is a rearranging your furniture. Okay. That's okay? a great so point. This is like old school. And yeah. again, it's probably because this is how I grew up, but when I walk into homes, like if I'm going for my on-site co consultations on like a bigger project, right? I walk in the space and immediately I want to go like, can you leave for two hours? I'm going <laughs> to totally rearrange this and make it 10 times better while we work on your project. People don't know how to space plan. Right. They don't know, you know, certain things shouldn't go on certain walls or how lighting affects everything. So I think rearranging furniture and like testing and learning, because that doesn't cost any money. It doesn't right. cost one dollar it just costs some time right um and it's fun it's actually really fun for kids believe it or not one of the things that parents can do is rearrange their kids bedrooms like once a year or maybe once every couple of years sounds silly but when you do that the kid gets a fresh perspective Absolutely. and i think it, it sort of opens their mind to a new level of creativity um so i strongly recommend that so that's one thing um i would say another is Again, low budget, easy is textiles. Right. You know, that's like always a go to. You know, if you're bedding, I always, I almost always use white bedding, okay. probably because I grew up in the hotel business, <laughs> but also I like it. It's the cleanest. There's a lot of benefits to, right. to white bedding. Um, but change your, swap your pillows. Maybe swap, get, maybe get some beautiful drapes. Right. You know, you could do West Elm for that. You could go custom and spend a little bit more, but it's still less than like redoing your whole space. Absolutely. So those textiles also make a difference because textiles can be, I mean, bold and bright or they could be subdued and then your whole room and the energy of the room changes as a result. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and when going into that, because, you know, and I'm glad that you brought up the rearranging of furniture because it brought me back to my, my childhood mm. where literally like my brothers and I, we would change up our entire room and it. it felt like a brand new room right? it's like yeah and you don't realize what it does to you and, yeah. and fresh perspective is the best way to put it yeah it gives you a fresh perspective and then i also would say for the moms out there it gives you the opportunity to clean the room because yeah. <laughs> like, it's disgusting yeah it's when you leave that you turn it space, into a game right exactly it's like let's <laughs> if we haven't vacuumed this part of the space in a long time let's vacuum right. this um so it's like a double you know you feel extra good because it's clean and it's like a new space <laughs> absolutely and you know when going into you know self-taught designer yeah you know you threw yourself in there passion turned to purpose yeah. um what would you say that the industry says that you have to do that you just don't? Go to school? 
There, there you <laughs> I go. Mean, yeah, like, that's it. Right. I had so many people like, right. "Oh, you're gonna do it great. What school are you going to?" I'm like, "Right. I don't want to. I don't want to step foot in a school ever again. Right. I don't want to. It's not that I didn't like school, but I don't want to pay the bills to right. go to school. I don't have the time. I was working in corporate America. I'm like." I know that I have the eye to do this. I have the business acumen to right. do this. So now I just need the experience. Right. So that's why I started designing for free. Cause I'm like, I just need the experience. Uh, so they tell you, you have to go to school. Right. Everybody listening, <laughs> you don't have to go to school. And, and then I know there's people listening that did go to school. Right. And then they're like, what do you mean? But you know, this is why the world. Well, there's something around. for everyone because exactly. other people, like there are people that need that direction yeah. and the concrete, you know, this is what you do and that yeah. they make it their own and they own yeah. it. So I think it also depends on what you want to do. So if you just want right. to be an interior designer and work at a firm, right, you probably should go to school for that because they're going to expect, you know, CAD or you, you have to have some level of schooling to work right. inside of, you know, four walls with a boss. If you want to start your own thing, I like, I don't think interior design school is going to help you business school would help you right maybe go get your mba or take my business class um shameless plug well um, no i was gonna go in i was i, I was gonna good assume, segue? yeah without a doubt let's go right into it because i mean you you talk about it a lot um i've taken advice from you i mean just yeah. you know in a lot of different ways and i mean you're you're a leader in in the space you're a leader in the business world mm -hmm for men, for women, yeah. for everybody that are looking to start a business. And sometimes the most hardest, the most difficult part is just doing it. Exactly. And, you know, tell us about like, how, how are you, you know, going into teaching people and coaching people? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, on my drive here, I had a coaching session. <laughs> um, I waste no time. So I, uh, it was COVID right when COVID hit and I'm part of a few design communities and everybody, not just design communities, any community, anybody was right. like, what are we going to do with our business? Everybody was pivoting, brainstorming ideas. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but I was like, I feel that there's probably a lot of designers out there that want to do this and want to start their business. They don't know how. Right. And I'm like, okay, so I can either do like e-designs or like, you know, I'm watching what, I, and I actually tried that and I, <laughs> it was not successful uh, and I don't like doing it. So right. this is a beauty of being a business owner. I don't have to do it. So I stopped <laughs> doing it. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to create a program. And, you know, I took a couple of like digital courses on it and just said, listen, I, I am not perfect. I'm not a perfect business owner, but I know for certain working 16 years inside of corporate America puts me ahead of a lot of people. Absolutely. I also know that, you know, the people I'm around, um, Tony, I'm a big Tony Robbins person. We talk about the power of proximity. I'm around women with MBAs, women that are leading companies, fortune, like, I also feel like my network helps me be smarter. Right. In like, if I don't know an answer to something, I either Google it or go to YouTube or I call somebody in my network. So I felt like, you know, I think I have something that I can offer interior designers to help them on the business side. So I developed a class. It's six classes and there's six topics and we cover everything from marketing to how to work with vendors, how to charge, how to not lose money. Okay. Um, all of those things. And just was like, I'm doing this. I pray somebody signs up. Like yeah. <laughs> I remember like, is anyone going to actually sign up for this thing? Right. So my first class, I think we had 25 people. Um, That's amazing. And the peripheral benefits, like I was doing it for people. Yes. It's a revenue stream for my business. Right. Talk about business. Like I, I have a goal to have 10 revenue streams and that was one of them. Um, but the community the strengths. So literally right now, most people I'm using and I'm using a student. Like I hired a student, Pam, who works for me, took that class. That's amazing. You know, and now she works for me. So there's so many benefits that happen as a result of that class, but I digress. So yeah, I, I teach a six week. Um, it's, it's live and I share it all. That's what everyone says. They're like, you literally tell us everything. Like right. I, I don't, I tell them how much I charge. I give them my, you know, here's the template I use. You can ask me any, I'm an open book because what do, I don't, we're not competing. There's right. enough business to go around and I want to help you. And I want to like, I want you to walk away from the six weeks going, wow, the value that I got was 10 times more than the money I paid. Right. And that is, that makes it worth it for me. And, and that's, that's a huge kind of like that buffer between starting and getting business exactly. because the most difficult step is the first one and knowing even what yeah. to charge and what the industry standard is yeah. and what other people are doing. Yeah. I mean, and it creates fair competition in the sense of like, you know, somebody might be just not charging enough for yeah. what they do and they don't even know it until exactly later. You're and what I learned, cause I send out surveys and, and all the time to these students. Right. 
a hundred percent of the students say, I, what, what I ask them, like, what, what are you afraid of? Like, you know, and they're like, I'm afraid to fail. And I'm afraid I don't have the confidence to start the business. Right. And for me, what keeps me up at night is there are people in the world that should be designing and should be running a business. And they're not because of confidence. Right. The class yeah, I teach technical things and we, we talk about vendor relations and how to get a resale certificate and how to launch your brand. Like we talk about a lot of things at the end. Everybody's like this. I have the confidence now. Yeah, that's that, it. Yeah. that to me, you, you, yeah, the technical skills are important, but they now feel like, okay, I asked my questions. I got advice from people, not just me. Cause it's a group. I mean, it's a group session right. where it's a team at the end of the day. And so they just walk away feeling like, okay, I can do this. Right. And then they have somebody after, this is another benefit of the class because we're all part of a group now. So people will say, hey, I, I need a contractor. Hey, I need a tile installer. Hey, can you guys look at my new website? That's amazing. So everybody's helping each other at the end, which just is, this is the way business should be working. I just really believe if you have a talent and a gift and you're not sharing it, like you're not living out your purpose. I, I think couldn't the world agree with would you be more. a better place if everyone did that. Definitely. Because the unknown, based on what you're saying, is the most yeah. fearful part of anything. Yeah. yeah. You know, and people are afraid of taking that step because yeah. what they don't know. Yeah. And this is true for any, any, any Doesn't business, right? Right. Not just interiors. It could be a photographer. It could be a wedding planner. It could be a accountant who wants to start his or her own business, but doesn't feel they have the confidence or, you know, that people will take them seriously. Right. Another thing I teach on, like stay in your lane, like look forward, right. don't look to your right. Don't work, look to your left. Cause there's always going to be somebody better than you <laughs> making more money than you. There will be. And then the other direction, you're going to be ahead of a lot of people as well. Absolutely. I don't know that there's a benefit to looking at either. I think the benefit comes when you stay in your lane and you stay focused and you move forward at the pace that you, that you're set out to, to do. Right. And, um, that will make all the difference. Definitely. And, you know, talking about that and, you know, I, I hear it come up a lot in, in really every industry mm -hmm. and, you know, it, starting this piece of information, talking to the homeowners, Hiring a designer. Yeah. What should people know about hiring a designer? Um, and what questions to ask? Yeah. You know, or, or even why hire a designer? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll start with why. Yeah. Uh, why? So why hire a designer? Um, there's, I would say, a, f a few key reasons. Right. One, you will you will gain maximum efficiency in the project, providing the designer is doing a good job, which right. let's say they all are. So most homeowners they don't know how to project manage any type of renovation, even right. if it's a soft renovation, they don't know how to do it unless th they happen to be a project manager for work. <laughs> and maybe that's a skill they have. And right. fine. not to say the designers are project managers, but we help liaise across all the different parties and we know all the right questions to ask. Therefore we're mitigating any potential mistakes that might happen. Right. So a homeowner could do this, but I bet at the end they're going to be spending more time and they're going to be spending more money and there's going to be more mistakes. So you're going to mitigate most of those things. Again, we're not perfect. We're we're going to make a mistake. We're going to forget to ask a question, but 90% of that will get covered if you hire a designer. Number two, we're good at what we do, right? right? Like for your space, how to make rooms flow across the home. Uh, most people, that's another thing on the, on the, um, on the, uh, what I call internally B2C side, the, the homeowner side, the client side, no, every single client, I go through their house and they're like, it's just like I had this room and I did this and right. the dark floors here and I like this white thing and did it and nothing flows. The the pieces are nice. Right. The couch is nice. That rug in the other room is nice. There's a lot of nice things going on, but they missed it because there's no string holding all this. The together. lead role. The lead role. Right. <laughs> to set the tone of the whole house. Um so and it's not just to have a beautiful space. There's actual science and data and psychological uh, positive impact that when your space is cohesive, when you feel at peace, you're more likely to get a better night's sleep. You're more likely to have people inside of your home. Right. When you have more people inside of your home, it's a sense of community. We can live like we were born to be in community. There's all of these side effects that are way beyond like it looks pretty. Right. I want it to look <laughs> pretty, of course, but I am more interested in the actual outcome, which is you're going to love your space. Right. Your husband, you're as a married couple, probably you're going to get along a little bit better right? because you're not always like fighting over this and that and what should we do and da, da, da. no, like the space is set for you, for your lifestyle and flow as well. Right. So on the like visual side, that's a huge benefit. Um, 
I, those are the, I would say those are the two big things. I mean, I guess the third biggest one as well is our access to vendors. Well, that's the thing. You know what's available in the market. Yeah. Again, most people don't, or they just know retail, you know, and that's, we don't want to source from retail. We want to get you a beautiful product at, you know, um, from somewhere that no one else is going to have. Right. Um, and again, not every client wants that, but we, we do have access or the other thing I say is if a, if a client wants retail, at least we know how to curate retail better. That's the thing. Like I walk into some places and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, West Elm everything, right, which is right. great. I, I, no offense against West Elm, but like maybe curate it a little bit better so right. it doesn't feel like, oh, we just went to West Elm and said, I want that, 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 you know? Yeah. So we have access to vendors and we can curate the products better um, than a lay person. Yeah, because so. I mean- it's for some people, but I like to believe most people don't want them, their home to look like someone's showroom. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Some I mean, people do. Yeah. Which. It, well, sometimes that, I mean, that's the easy thing for some people yeah. because they're like, oh, I like exactly that put in my house. Yeah. Which yeah. great. I mean, you know what you want and you still want to hire me. Then that's amazing. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Takes like the legwork out of my job a little bit, but. But looking at that, I mean, what questions should they ask to make sure they hire the right professional? Because, yeah. I mean, you hear it every single day, like, oh, if I would have done this or done that or yeah. I just didn't know what to ask. Yeah. I think uh, they should ask about the ecosystem of vendors. Okay. And when I say vendors, third party, anybody third party. It right. could be a furniture distributor. It could be a um, tile uh, a tile installer. Any person that's going to be doing something in the house. Right. I would ask about that. What what does your network look like? Hey, can I get a referral? Right. Can I, you know, let me see the work that that tile installer did so that I can understand that a little bit better. So definitely ask about the ecosystem of vendors. Um, another thing that I think, again, this is on the business side. Right. T- like explain to me your process. Right. What do you do? Like great that you design and everything can be beautiful and you need to know the design process, but there's... 70% of what we do is not even designed. Right. So show me your process. Like, you know, how are you managing ordering? How are you managing the back orders? Like, do you have a project management system? Do I get a weekly email? Do you send me a tracker? Do I log into a dashboard? What tools do you use? Because if you're, especially in a big renovation, you know, right. if it's one room, it's probably not the most important question, but if you're doing a renovation more than three rooms, um, and particularly a new build, that has to be, a, a, a really strategic system and process to make sure it goes well. Okay. Um, I would say I, again, on the referral side, like how well you're working with the team members, right. like that's really, really important um, in that. So those are a few things that I would have them ask. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, and then one of the, mo- I mean, you deal a lot with and you're teaching people like, you know, as far as how to run a business, how to start a yeah. business, how to, you know, build their business, yeah. you know, an important thing for designers to know is, a sale isn't always the best sale. How do you choose your clients? Because oh, I love you're, this question. you're pretty much like married to them. Like you're in a project. Doesn't matter if it's a month, two yeah. months, three months, six months, a year, year and yeah. a half, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, don't just take it because, you know, it's people that are willing to pay you. What do you have to say about that? I have a great answer. To that. Um, so <laughs> you I learned, probably lived I, it on every I angle. I learned the hard way. <laughs> um, and I teach this in one, right. of my, in one of my lessons. So I have, it is not a perfect process, but it has helped my business significantly. Right. I have a process where when I get a lead, I send an email. It's the same email. So everybody that asks anything about if it's a one room project or a full, they get an email from right. me. And in that email it says um, to fill out a questionnaire so I can learn very specifically what the project, what the, what the SOW is. Now, right. It's not super, it takes five minutes to fill out the questionnaire. So that in of itself, it comes back and I can understand what type of person this is based on how they filled it out. Number two, I send them an investment guide. My investment guide, it's a probably a 20 page PDF and it takes them through my process. Here's who I am. Here's samples of my work. Here's how I work. Here are my rates. Here's what to expect. Here's the FAQs. No, you're not getting my discounts. That's the number one question. If somebody asks, and again, I learned that I used to give the discounts away. That's a side conversation, by the way, (laughs) that I have a lesson on that. Um, So I give them this investment guide and I put it back in the client's court and I say, well, part of it I put back. I say, read through this investment guide. And if you're aligned with my process and how I run my business, because every designer is different, right? Right. Um, then let's set up a 30-minute complimentary call. Right. 
And that's also if I, based on the survey, because the survey they fill out has the scope of work, their budget, you know, um, their style preference, things like that. And I have limits now. Like I have minimum thresholds that I have to hit. So that'll be an instant, like we can't take that project. But beautiful part about being in my community is I refer those leads out right right so somebody's benefiting from it and the client benefits because like oh i and it didn't work with Anne, but she passed me on to a designer that i bet know, they respect that though 100 percent. yeah 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 so that is something that once we've gone through that because it shows that they're invested right this is not a one-way i know you're hiring me and i will work for you ultimately right but in especially in the beginning like are you serious about this and are you okay with my pricing and how i work this process um it shows me I have had a almost 100% success rate. That's ba- amazing. Ba- and it's a simple process. Right. It's one of the most impactful but simple processes I developed in my business that, yeah, it's, it's Well, great. I was going to ask, you developed it or you learned it from other people or different key elements or from, you know, Com- just experience? Combination. Yeah. Combination for sure. Um, I learned about investment guides. I do mine a little differently, but I did learn about investment guides at a conference I went to. Okay. And so I asked questions like, what is that? You know, we were sh- looking at various investment guides like, oh, it's sort of like your website, but it goes deeper and then it shows your pricing and things like that, right. um, that you're not going to publish on your website. I mean, some people do and I, whatever, that's fine. Right. Um, I don't do that, but in the investment guide, it goes into that. So it was a combination of like, communication 101 questionnaires like it's just sort of a skill set I learned right you know along the way and then you know making sure the thing about being a business owner is I don't have to take all these clients right I can choose um, who I want to take and it weeds out some of those clients that don't fit my brand or don't fit my you know minimum thresholds right, right away yeah. yeah I mean project has to be exciting for you as well it, uh, yeah because yeah. to your point I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you're married to that client yeah. for a while you got to get along exactly my my one of my um, KPIs for success is if the client towards the end or at the end if we're drinking together, if we're toasting to the project, I'm like, okay, this must have went well. Right. <laughs> and I, I remember one night, um, a client had asked me over like, Hey, let's have champagne. And we went through like quite, <laughs> quite a few bottles of champagne. I'm like, this is a good, this is a good project. Oh, for sure. Cause yeah. the reality in construction doesn't matter if you love the person, you don't, whatever it is, things are going to go wrong. Uh, And I say that out of the gate. Right. If you're looking for a perfect designer, don't hire me. Right. Like, and by the way, don't, you won't hire anybody, but (laughs) I will make a mistake. But here's the thing about me. I'm going to own it. I'm not going to BS my way through it. I'm going to say, sorry, if it's a financial mistake, I'm going to have to take the hit on that. Like I communicate all of these business things in my 30 minute call with them. So they know this is not just like, oh my gosh, beautiful designs. Amazing. No, right. It's, we're running a business and this is a lot of money. We're, we're managing well over six figures for a massive renovation, right? right? Well over. So they should also be asking like, how do you manage the budget? Right. What do you, oh, you, for sure. you know, what, what type of tracking are you going to do on that? What happens if you go over, you know, and th- that should be part of the dialogue for yeah, sure. Definitely. Because, you know, I mean, there's any home, older homes, especially there's a lot of unknown behind the walls. Oh my and gosh. You, you get, I mean, that's reality. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, it's like people, Surprise. but also they watch, they watch these shows like, you know, on HGTV yeah. and DIY and a lot of it, like it's from other parts of the country that maybe budgets are completely different oh or just yeah. not reality. And exactly. you know, you can't base it off of that, yeah. but. Um, so, I mean, we've gone over a lot and I've learned a lot just (laughs) hearing you speak and it's, it's motivating. I mean, hearing what you've done, not just for yourself, but for community and, you know, people that, you know, you're, you're coaching along the way. And the fact that it's not just like a coach, you pay me and, you know, good luck. It's a continuous thing. Yeah. But, um, so before I jumped on an IG live, just because I wanted to know what other people wanted to know, it's going to be just very quick, quick fire. It's just just a few things that people wanted to know. And, and something, um, the first item that somebody brought up was fireplace design in South Florida. Fireplace design. I'm designing a fireplace right now. It's so funny. It's such a rare thing. Right. What was the question? Like, do we do fireplaces? They wanted to know about uh, how to have a functional fireplace, but yet fit South Florida because you don't necessarily need the heat, but a fireplace is a focal point of a room yeah. and it adds an element that is rare to get in, in this type of, you know, where we live. Yeah. I mean, I so my preference in South Florida, which is, is a little bit against my brand aesthetic, but... What I've seen, and this is not the one I'm designing. I'm designing at one, it's a real fire, like a yep. real working fireplace. Um, so, but I have seen, and I love, and if I had the opportunity to do it, the one where I'm going to butcher like the language on this, <laughs> so forgive me. It's okay. <laughs> um, 
it's like it's like a dividing wall, let's say between a dining room and a living space, and the fireplace is in between. So you can sort of see through. That's amazing. To the you know to the other room, that's beautiful. It's very modern. Right. Again, I have some modern in my design, but gen- I mean, I would offset it with things that made it a little less modern. But I would say that approach is really really good. Um, there's a new build I'm working on, and we spent a lot of time designing the fireplace and the thresholds and everything around it based on um, the, a cover of Architecture Digest, <laughs> which was, we're replicating, like, so beautiful. So I would say if you're going to do a fireplace, like, design it with really cool f- tile, like, be intentional right. about it because it can be a focal point in the space, right? Absolutely. Um, it's another thing. Then it's like, I don't know. I know the person's not here, so they can't tell me if I answer their question. But right. that's what I would no, say. No, but that, that's what they're wondering because, yeah. you know, I mean, you see it in a lot of design yeah. and exactly what you mentioned. I mean, being able to have that, it's kind of like a room divider, but yeah. it kind of like brings it all together yeah. because you're in two separate spaces. Yeah. But that that's basically, they just wanted to know about how yeah. to, generally speaking, fireplace design, what's yeah. your take on it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next one is, which we kind of already went over, we spent a lot of time on it, but wall coverings. Yeah. Um, you know. My favorite topic. Wall, <laughs> wallpaper was in style, out of style for a long time. Yeah. And it's back, I feel like, bigger than ever. Did it ever go out of style? Did Pro- it? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I feel like people kind of started going towards, you know, uh, um, even like shiplap before um, yeah. wallpaper, but more so like doing tile walls and things like yeah. that and doing accent like walls. Slat, and Yeah, like what you're sitting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is a huge trend right now. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the slat walls, I yeah. mean, people want it and, you know, you don't realize, you know, everyone doesn't do it and this is all milled work. I mean, it was a slab of yeah. walnut and they cut it down, they milled it, but, you know, it's, it's an impressive look. Yeah. And wallpaper, let's not even talk about wallpaper. We'll just talk about wall coverings mm-hmm. because there's so many different elements. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like the... Uh, um, I don't even know if it's like a foam or a composite material yeah. where there's like squares and, you know, yeah. um, but what would you say that we haven't already covered in the sense of stepping beyond even just yeah excluding wallpaper? But yeah. I mean, then there's like d- dimensional wallpaper and things like yeah. that. So. I mean, what comes to me is that there is the sky's the limit on wall covering, right? right? Cause to your point, I mean, Same. we're sitting here, there's, there's three different wall coverings, sort of what we're looking at in this space. You guys can't see it, but you know, we have a stone, we have this textured, um, this textured wall and the wood wall. Right. I think that it goes back to like the leading character. If you have a space that has a wall, like a hero wall in it, and most rooms do. A lot of them don't, though. Some of the spaces, they're sort of like all, they all share the same like spotlight. Right. <laughs> but if you have a wall that is going to be a standout, challenge yourself, challenge your designer to go, what could we do with the brainstorm? I mean, right. I always tell people, like, go to Pin- like I go to Pinterest. Yeah. Like, sometimes when I'm just like, okay, I don't know what to do here. I'm well, just Well, I know that's a dream. part of your course, too. It is part of my <laughs> course, Yeah. Um, so because there's so many materials that you can use apart from wallpaper, you know, not just paper, Absolutely. there's wood, there's stone, there's tile, there's so many different things. Like we just did it. Um, actually it was running up a fireplace, like an accent wall in a, in a sort of like a cocktail lounge uh, room. And we tiled all the way up that wall. So now it's, yes, it's the fireplace is the hero, but that whole wall becomes a statement. You know, I just went to the house after the install (laughs) Um, and like when it was fully complete and it, the room looks entirely different and it was only, you know, it was maybe 50 square feet, maybe not even. Right. So it wasn't like a massive expense or anything, but it makes all the difference. Without it. So I would just say, yeah, brainstorm the different materials, challenge your designer on it. Look at Pinterest, get inspired because there's a lot of really good options. And there's so many different things. And that kind of brings me just because I'm sitting here looking at everything yeah. I and mean, different surfaces and things like that. Don't forget about the ceiling. The ceiling. Even right here. I don't know yeah. if you've had the opportunity to work with it, but like this, the company that came in that did our ceiling, it's Vellum Design. We had yeah. a drop ceiling and you know we wanted a more modern look they focus on linear lighting and all different you know so there's a lot that you can do yeah and you know different colors um you can have it in gloss you can i mean you can have a picture you can have whatever but i mean there's so many different things that people can do with yeah coverings and that kind of goes into my next um item because there was a company that was on this ig live that i was doing and they focus in glass and um, they do wall coverings, they do shower enclosures, they yeah. do backlit glass. I, I mean, have you had a chance to work with anything like that? You know, <laughs> f- apart from the standard like 
you know, shower enclosures. Right. Um, I'm trying to, I don't know. I don't think anything comes to mind, yeah. but I'm going to check this company out. Yeah. Who are they? Alex Glass Designs. Alex so, Glass Designs. So it's okay. actually really impressive. And they have a propri- proprietary LED backlit panel okay. where you can, it, you can have it printed where it looks like a piece of stone oh, and, okay. or a fish tank or any type of pattern mm. that they can, any custom pattern. It can be a photo, whatever it is. Incredible. Um, but it adds That's a whole amazing. different dimension to yeah. what a space is. Yeah. It's and that goes art. to show, like, also take a risk in a space. Yeah. You know, be it a wall covering or your ceiling or, you know, it, it becomes an, a piece of art at the end of the day. Right. Um, so I love that. I'm going to look I'm going to look that company yeah. up. Check them out. I yeah. mean, they're impressive and they've been in our show for years, but um, they work all over the place but yeah. it's an impressive product the podcast is not sponsored by them it is not sponsored by them <laughs> yes disclaimer that they are not sponsoring this podcast but they are impressive we like to talk about yeah, impressive companies of course. this is where we discover Authentic. not only not only for the people listening but yeah. for the people we sit down yeah. with but um the other thing is and i feel like a lot of people leave it to the end of the list when they're remodeling mm-hmm. um uh, we had somebody asking about lighting specifically yeah, yeah. um oh, and don't leave it to the end <laughs> right well i feel like people don't really account for it or budget it properly mm. um and that's i think part of working with the right designer because yeah. lighting it's you know you mentioned jewelry of the home when it comes to yeah. you know um, t- um handles and faucets and you mm-hmm. know all of the different items that you can put in a kitchen but yeah. lighting yeah Lighting cannot be at the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's got, it's, 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 to me, it's always part of the initial designs right. and design direction. So when I take, um, I have a design concept presentation that I take every client through. And one of the topics is uh, metals and materials. And that metals and materials story then fuels the type of lighting that we're going to go after. Okay. Um, and lighting is important, obviously, for the actual light, like the, you know, what it's doing in a space. Right. Um, that matters significantly. A lot of people aren't thinking about it. And I have walked into clients' homes after we've renovated and they're like, check out the lighting. I'm like, (laughs) yeah, it's much, it creates a whole new energy, right? From daytime to nighttime. So thinking about that at the literal part of lighting, but yeah, it has to be, it, it, it's like rounding out the whole space, but it should not be done at the end. Styling should be done, right? Like the plant you're going to put on the table or the books that you're going to put in your bookshelf, like things like that. But lighting needs to be incorporated right away. Um, because especially right now, there's so many incredible vendors right. that have like artistic lighting that can be the showstopper in a space. Right. I always go back. Kelly Wurstler is like a design hero for me and her lighting line is uh, unbelievable like if you walk into a space and you see her lights it's like that's all you need in that space to make it just pop that's amazing um yeah so and you mentioned it very briefly um mixing metals yeah do it don't yeah, do it of course do it all right <laughs> of course do it um i always say like in any given space you have to look at metals and materials and just don't overwhelm all of them like i usually right. say three to four in any space between metals and materials. So thinking materials being wood, marble, you know, those type of things. And then the metals are obviously like brass or, okay. you know, like the matte black. So I remember I had a, a, a woman I coached and she, I was, I was actually coaching her not on the business side on her designs. So she sent me, the, she sent me the design and it was like round 10 with this client and I'm like <laughs> feeling terrible for her. She's like, I can't get it. And I looked at it and I, instantly I was like, you have too many metals and materials. And right. she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, first of all, take my class. But second of all, <laughs> don't take it. I'll teach you. I'll teach you exactly what I mean. Right. She was like, I didn't see it. And I, and I'm a design. She was a design. She's like, I, you're right. I had too many things going on and then you don't know where to look. Right. And then it creates this subconscious. I don't want to say stress. I think that's a little extreme, but there's a subconsciousness of like uneasy when there's too many, not, not too many things going on, but when it, there's lacking cohesion in a space, right. that's really it. So I say three to four is usually my benchmark, but we can take risks. No, that's an, that's a great point. Yeah. And, and, but it doesn't just stop interior. And I see you working on, re- especially recent projects, you, you know, you're going exterior patio, yeah. you know, going through COVID, going yeah. through this pandemic, people yeah. are stepping out. It's the oh, easiest yeah. way to expand your living space. Totally. Um, you know, we had somebody that wanted to know specifically as far as should the expectation be that designers will get into the landscape design because the inside element should match yeah. and marry up to what's happening exterior yeah. wise. Yeah. So the answer to that question is they, and I think it's an expectation that an interior designer should be able to do the exterior design furnishings. Okay. 
uh, landscaping <laughs> is a no. Right. You would get, it would be a special person that would have both interior design experience and landscape. It's, it, it exists, but I right. shouldn't say special. They, those people do exist. Um, but when people ask me like, oh, and we have the exterior, I'm very clear. And, and this is also for any designer listening, st- like state who you are and what you do. Don't bo- right. BS your way through. I almost cursed on the podcast. I guess if somebody says I can do it, that's a red flag. <laughs> it's a red flag. Yeah. It's like, do, so you do everything. <laughs> right. Like, can you like babysit my kids too? Like, what else can you do? Fix my plumbing? No, right. but I'm very clear on like what I do and don't do. And right. I don't think it, I don't think it would be a realistic expectation to have an interior designer be a landscape designer. Okay. Well, in fact, I'm, I'm working on a project where there's a massive landscaping and I sat in the first meeting and I looked at the client and I, I said, I don't belong here. Like right. literally I want to be here and I wish I could have the knowledge, but I don't, I'm not right. going to add value. And you need somebody that is a hundred percent. And she respected it. And we're, I'm working on her kitchen and her master. I'm Amazing. doing other things, but um, people just want the truth and yeah. don't, don't sell yourself on something that you really, really don't know. Well, you're setting yourself up for failure too. Yeah. And, so. <laughs> and landscape design, cause we live in South Florida. It's not easy. Right. I mean, I have been here for seven years and I've worked across a lot of projects and a close friend of mine is actually like a, a sort of like a self-taught landscape designer. Right. It's hard. You got to know what plants and what works and where the sunlight is and what type of stone is. I, I, I'm like, I'm from right. a farm town. <laughs> I'm from a farm town. There's like evergreens. Well, I guess know? a good way to put it is you wouldn't ask a landscaper to design your kitchen. Exactly. Great point, Adam. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean, you got to look at it both ways. Yeah. But, you know, that that's the thing. I mean, and it's a matter of just having the right professionals. Yeah. And we've discussed so much. But yeah. is there anything that you want to leave us with that maybe we didn't touch on today that's important? I think we've touched on a lot. Yeah. I'm so thankful. I hope it helped the yeah. people, you know, if you're a designer listening or if you're a homeowner that you know, the right questions to ask matter. Um, there's also like an intuition, right. I think oh, in that sure. process, yeah. you know, as well. Um, but no, I think, I think this is great. Well, I can't thank you enough. I'm and, excited for the show. Well, I, I can't wait for, let's talk about the show for <laughs> yes. a minute. So, uh, you are one of our featured yeah. interior designers building out your designer yeah. vignette. Do you want to give any, uh, teasers or taste yeah. as far as what you're doing? I will. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited about it. Like I, October like really. 1st to the 3rd yeah. at the Miami Dade County Fair and Expo Center. Yes. Please come and visit. Um, it's going to be epic from many angles, but so the space that I'm designing, I'm calling it layered living Okay. and it plays off of a little bit of what we've talked about, but it's a living room essentially, but it's going to be multifunctional. So we're going to have a cocktail lounge part an actual living part, and then sort of a library part. Amazing. So it's going to have a lot of layers. We're going to go bold, um, bold, but approachable. Right. Right. So that's sort of my vibe. That's what I like um, the space um, to do. And I'm so excited about the vendors that have said yes to it. I know you guys probably have already seen Roberta Schilling. Yep. Um, she's a gem <laughs> of a human. So, but her products are, are some of the best, most unique products. So I'm so thankful to just really get to showcase her products, but within the space that I'm designing. So that's a little teaser. Sounds so good. Can we, can I have cocktail? Can I serve cocktails in it? Uh, that, that's a, <laughs> that's not up to me. That's a, a building I'm question, kidding. but uh, just kidding. No, just kidding. <laughs> but um, I just got kicked out of designing this vignette, didn't I? <laughs> no, 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 no. That, it's, it's welcome. Actually, you can, uh, um, people can hire you and design the project. And I'm, from what I understand, there's champagne, yes, there's drinks, there's perfect. everything after. Let's so, do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, but say if somebody wants to reach you, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah. Um, so my website is anueno.com, A-N-N-U-E-N-O.com. And I'm on Instagram at, at anueno interior design. Um, those are the two main ways. I mean, I, I would give my phone number, but that might be weird. It's all on the website. Okay. Yeah, Everything's exactly. There. You can find it. <laughs> yeah. you can, it's like scary how much information people can find these days. Yeah. Um, but no, that's where to find me. Amazing. Well, yeah. I mean, I suggest for everyone to check you out on Insta. Your Instagram is inspiring. Thank I mean, you. you are, you know, there is nothing held back. You, people can see exactly who you are, your design, your life, everything. Yeah. And that's what's really impressive because knowing who you're going to work with, I'm a big believer that you do, you have to know the person. And, yeah. pe- and in my opinion, which is why I'm passionate about what I do is people do business with people and you know, there is no false front. So I appreciate that. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Check out our website, homeshows.net. Follow us at FL Home Shows and thank you and uh, tune in for the next episode. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. (laughs) That's a wrap.